Well, the good news is that we didn't have to take part in the Club World Cup, which is a welcome relief, really, to everybody. But we have got the Community Shield once again here today against Liverpool. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the start of Season 3 of Chelsea. It's Chelsea, clearly, and we have made some major transfer moves. Yes, obviously, last time's triumph in the FA Cup final against Liverpool and now a chance to just add to that with the Community Shield as well. But we have had a busy summer. It's still not quite over, but we've, we've made all the moves we really want to make. And let's just go straight into it. It's mostly a summer of outs. Our squad was very, very big. It still is really quite big. We've got one slot left for the Premier League, but we probably wouldn't be able to register them for the Champions League anyway. So I'm kind of going to just sort of not really not really worry about it too much. This screen is just a nightmare this year because the transfers go over the two different seasons depending on when you do them before the league reset or not. It's very irritating. But anyway, let's start with the released players. And first of all, Thiago Silva has retired. Um, it, he said he was going to do it. It was been coming for a while. Obviously, really solid in the first season. And then second season, didn't play a single league game, barely played at all. Very reliable in the first season, but kind of just sort of trailed off towards the end and then we replaced him the following year but good luck in retirement I'm not going to hire him as a coach because as you can see he is pretty terrible and then some other players that have departed on free some of them have found their clubs now Victor Moses his uh, his Chelsea career it's been long it's finally over he's gone to Brighton now on a free obviously had that wonderful couple of seasons with Antonio Conte this one here we won the league and since then and before then really just kind of constant loan spells he's finally left he's gone to Brighton good luck uh, Jack Wilshere has gone as well didn't didn't really work out kind of just yeah didn't didn't really work out no one wants him either and then surely the worst transfer in Chelsea history for everything that's happened to Mui Bakayoko has gone on a free because I saw no point offering him a new contract I didn't want to keep him and uh, now he's joined Wolves and he's valued at 32.5 million which is absolutely fantastic why someone couldn't have bought him last year I don't know, but then given his performances on loan at Napoli, that's probably why. We have made some money back from those loan fees throughout his career, but nowhere near what was paid for him. At least it's over now. Quite a few other youngsters have gone as well, just because really their potential wasn't particularly all that good. It's not really worth it. Uh, players like Dujon Sterling, who you know could, could have had something about them, but just not really good enough for the level we are currently at. So they have all gone. Now, a lot of young players have gone out on loan, obviously, is Chelsea. But um, Adam Eda, he's gone on loan to Rotherham. Obviously, just kind of a bit of a novelty signing last year. Hopefully, he can actually play some football in the championship. Plenty of other people going out on loan as well. Conor Gallagher, for example, he's on loan at Toulouse this season. Was at Vita Sarnam last year. Did okay, but he's 22. We wouldn't be able to register him, really. He's solid, if not spectacular. And Ethan Ampadu, who we ruined a year of his career just to make sure he would become club drained. He's now gone out on loan to Werder Bremen for the season. Other guys who could maybe make the first team at some point, Fastino and Urin, he spent last season on loan at QPR, did really well, 10 goals and 10 assists in the championship. This year, Norwich City, a team who are more likely to be competing for the title. Good luck to him. And then Billy Gilmore, who didn't have a very good season last year at Swansea, has now gone to Derby, and he's got a 6.3 in his first game, so already a good start, Billy. And then some other sales. We'll go in reverse price order. Victor Fisher, who you probably forgot was even here, has gone to Porto. And this is a cracking transfer because he did actually do really well when he was playing in his first season. He scored scored four, uh, four goals overall, uh, mostly in the Champions League. He did pretty well when called upon. We signed him for £650,000. He's gone to Porto for £12.25 million. Massive profit for very little expense. I like that a lot. And then Edouard Mendy has gone as well. Obviously lost his place as our first choice goalkeeper and just didn't really play much last season particularly. Wanted to leave. He's gone to Tottenham. For 13.75 million, quite a big loss on him for what we paid from Wren. I mean, I didn't pay it. It was the board that paid it. Um, it did okay. I mean, well, I say he did okay. He did really well, to be honest. 24 goals conceded, 23 clean sheets. Got a better rating than Donald Rumor. But overall, Donald Rumor was just better and just made sense to get a bit of money for a guy who was only ever going to be second choice. And then a player I didn't really expect to get much for, but 14.5 million is what AC Milan have paid for Trevor Chalaba. Some nice attributes, but he was about the 10th choice centre-back, so to get anywhere near that amount of money for him is really quite good. And then there's this man. I almost forgot he was he was going to come back. Suddenly the wage bill went up massively. I was like, well, what's done this? It's his fault. Spent last season on loan at AC Milan and has now left permanently to go to the same stadium but just the other dressing room. Inter Milan 
is where he has gone. 27 million. Obviously, it's not 71 million, but considering everything he's done since generating that price tag, I'm quite happy with that, to be honest. And then the big one, and it is a very, very big one. Christian Pulisic has gone to Real Madrid. Obviously, last season, we had the drama in January. They put a bid in. It was a terrible bid, but they put a bid in. He really wanted to go. Caused all kinds of all, all, all kinds of um, infighting and uh, unrest in the dressing room. Other players, Hudson Odoi, Reina, they were upset. They thought he should be allowed to go, obviously, because that means that they play more. Real Madrid came back in. He, he sort of settled down. He got on with it for the rest of the season. But then Real Madrid came back in the summer, and once again, he was like, "I really want to leave." And I thought, "I'm not. I'm not dealing with this. I'm not dealing with the drama." If they pay a hundred million, you can go, and a hundred million is what they have paid. Now, obviously a very good player and a 23-year-old American is incredibly valuable from a financial perspective in terms of marketing, but I think for the money that they've given us, I'm quite happy to get this done. We had to, I wanted to bring another striker in, another winger in, which we have done, as you'll see in a minute. We had to get rid of someone big and, well, this, this made sense. Obviously, over his last two seasons, has been pretty good. Last season, very good, 10 goals, five assists, 7.12 average rating, but that was kind of all in the early part of the season. As soon as the interest came from Real Madrid, he pretty much sort of stopped. He did score some goals since then, of course he did, but just not not quite as prolific as he had been at the start of the season. So I think if his head's been turned for that huge amount of money, I'm happy to let him go. Is he really 100 million worth? I think the person we've got in to replace him arguably is better in quite a lot of ways, and... He didn't cost 100 million. Someone else cost 100 million, but um, I think that was justified. I mean, 18 dribbling is great, but there's some things here. The long shots of 10, not amazing, really. And other things, not too. Uh, I, I don't think he's worth 100 million. So the fact that they've paid us that, I'll take that all day long. So there we are. Those are the major departures. A few other young players have gone for pretty minimal cash or on loan or on freeze. Uh, people like Lewis Baker, Izzy Brown have finally actually permanently left the club. And as you can see here, according to this screen, we've brought in 155 million and spent absolutely nothing. But that's of course, because all the transfers we made were before the reset date. So actually they're in the, the previous one. Let's, let's look at them now. Now we haven't made many transfers because frankly, we didn't really need to. Overall last season, I thought we played really well. Our squad was really good. Defensively, we were obviously the best in the league. Absolutely outstanding at that. It was only really an issue of goals that I really wanted to do. And given how massive our squad is, there's not, there wasn't really much wiggle room to really add to it. But one player who has done just that in terms of a bit of squad depth is Aaron Hickey, a player who was pretty much my go-to first signing in any new game on last year's FM when he was at Hearts. So you could pick him up for a very low fee normally. Of course, got a move in real life in the summer, just gone to Bologna, and he's had two seasons. They've played quite a lot. Not the craziest average rating, but not bad. And I just think for £8.75 million, pounds, he's Scottish, so he doesn't need a work permit, don't have to worry about anything like that. He's 20, we don't need to register him, at least for the league, which is obviously really good. And just some lovely attributes for a fullback. Uh, good crossing, good dribbling, marking could be better, but passing, tackling, work rate, physically pretty good. Everything you really need. And the best part of all, he's either footed, meaning he can he can play on both sides, he can, he can deputise for anyone if we need him to. Just a really good solid fifth choice fullback. Nice to have him. And coincidentally, he's not the only player we've signed from Bologna this summer. We have also signed his teammate, Riccardo Orsolini. One cap for Italy, one goal. The Italian David Nugent. I think he's quite a bit better than that. I mean, you look at his attributes and you look, I just think there's a lot there that I really like. 18 determination, 16 pace and acceleration and agility, 17 dribbling, Decent finishing, 15 long shots is really good in the kind of positions he's going to be in. Some nice traits there as well. He's got shoots from distance, which is going to help that out. And I'm just, I just look at this, and if we compare him with Christian Pulisic, I just kind of think that in a lot of ways, he's better. I mean, you look at it like that. He's 25 years old, two years older. Obviously, Pulisic can develop quite a bit more, but I just think, I think, I think we've got an upgrade actually, and an upgrade at a massive, massively low price of £22.5 million. I think that's an absolute steal. His performances over the last few seasons, he's played every game in Serie A for Bologna, two years running, 
nine goals, three assists in the first season, eight goals, six assists in the next, 7.28 average rating. I like that a lot. Now you might be thinking, hang on, you sold Christian Pulisic, he plays on the left wing, and Orsolini, he, he plays on the right wing. How's that gonna work? Well, actually, very simple solution to that problem. Very simple indeed, because Callum Hudson-Odoi, who we have been using on the right-hand side over the last couple of seasons, is either footed and is actually more comfortable playing on the left-hand side than on the right. If we just look at the star rating, he gets three stars on the left as an inverted winger, two and a half on the right. So he's just going to be the other option on the left-hand side. Dead easy. So that was a bit of a budget signing that I think has really improved the team. This one has really improved the team, but there's nothing, nothing budget about it at all. Although we had already paid the fee before getting all the money back from the Christian Pulisic transfer. £100 million is what we have had to pay to get Erling Haaland away from Borussia Dortmund. I spent ages looking for the, the ideal winger. I think Orsolini is that man. Didn't spend any time looking for the ideal striker. I knew exactly who I wanted. It was just a question of whether we could get him. And they, yep, Dortmund, they accepted £100 million. His release clause, whatever it is, £76 million in real life. That was long gone, uh, and you can see that from his from his performances. Just the 44 goals in the Bundesliga over the last two years. He's not even played even close to all the games. 7.88 average rating last year. We wanted someone that could just score more goals. Obviously, Timo Werner had an incredible first season. Didn't do all that much last year. Came up with some very important goals, but didn't do all that much. Cammy Abraham, sort of similar levels both of his seasons. Erling Haaland is a world-class player, a world-class striker, five-star current and potential ability at the age of 22. I don't need to say much about him. You all know. You all know how good he is on the game. Very expensive, but hopefully very, very worth it. 19 finishing. I mean, you can't say much wrong with that. So there we are. As said, not many signings. We still have absolutely loads of money to spend if we want. We've got 181 million, and the bank is 402 million, which is very nice indeed. Maybe that can pay for a new stadium at some point, but I think these two additions, they could be, hopefully, fingers crossed, what does it in terms of getting us a bit more consistent in terms of scoring goals, and hopefully this can be our year to dethrone Liverpool. And uh, Liverpool did win the Champions League, by the way, 4-0 win against Real Madrid. So at least two years running, we've been knocked out by the eventual winners, which I suppose is at least something. So there we are then. What do you think of the signings? Let me know down below. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe as well so you don't miss what happens this season, can we do it? Can we win? Today could be a good marker in the Community Shield, and we're going to be starting both of our two major new signings right from the off. Haaland up front, Orsolini on the right-hand side. Depay is going to be on the left. Midfield, we're going to go with Havertz, Kante, and Tenali for now. Tenali's done really well in pre-season, and uh, I think Havertz, his FA Cup final exploits, he deserves the start in this one. Mason Mount on the bench, of course. The defence is, as you would expect, Chilwell and James in the wide areas. Bastoni and the FA Cup final hero, Fikeo Tomori in the middle. He's uh, lacking a little bit of fitness, but uh, he will be able to play this one. That is for sure. And Don Rumor, of course, is going to be in goal. Right, any major new signings for Liverpool? They've, they've got David Neres on the bench and uh, Lissandro Martinez as well at uh, centre-back. So, yep, some, some improvements. Oh, Bentoncourt as well. Bentoncourt in there too. So, yep, some, some good improvements there. But we've got, we've got Erling Haaland and Ricardo Orsolini. Right, it's a highlight. Liverpool with a corner towering header from Bastoni to get it away and the two new boys are away Orsolini sets up Haaland beats one can he get a shot on goal yes he can it's tipped over by Allison, but already heavily involved from the two new boys Memphis Depay swings in a corner he signed a new contract he finds Orsolini but it's cleared well by one of Liverpool's newbies Martinez but he gets it back from Tonali he's going to take this on he does it's in I don't think it's going to count is it no it is it's an own goal well, good move, good reaction from Tonali. Gives it back to the corner taker. And the second time of asking, it's a great ball from Depay. Haaland, I thought it came off him. It doesn't. He was being marked by Van Dijk, who just sort of, he's standing there. Well, a great start. Unexpected, uh, but uh, very nice indeed. Bastoni pings the ball forward, looking for Haaland. He doesn't quite make the run in time. And uh, Liverpool can now counter themselves. Benton with a lovely ball. He's found Wijnaldum, who's scored. That's what he's done there. Just just scored. Just scored. Um yeah. Inventive from Bastoni. It was a, it was an idea. Not a very good idea. Not a very good idea at all. Just really simple. I mean, Harlan decides to run. He go he goes for the press after the ball has already been given away. And um simple pass from, from Bentoncourt and uh, all of our good work undone. 
uh, Liverpool, they're looking, uh, looking pretty ominous here. But a good clearing header from Tomori once again. And uh, not a good pass, though. Not, not a good pass, but it's been intercepted once more by Tenali, who's immediately given it straight away. We're being, a, we're very sloppy here, very sloppy indeed. Mane's in, Donnarumma makes a good save to push it wide. I mean, very even from both sides so far. Depay finds Angolo Kante, goes back to Tenali. Can we work something here? The pitch seems absolutely massive here at Wembley. I don't remember it being this big last time for the final. Chilwell, good space for him. Finds Depay, who's been tackled well by... Alexander-Arnold, or not, apparently, not tackled well. It's a penalty and a chance for Erling Haaland to score his first Chelsea goal. He steps up, and he, well, Alisson got a hand on it, but only enough to tip it in. He nearly got there, Alisson. Let's watch it again. Yeah, it gets... Well, yeah, oh, no, he didn't get a hand to it at all. It hit the post. It hit the post and then hit Alisson as it went over the line. I thought he got a hand to it. But it, it, never mind. It's 2-1. Harlan scored. Money well spent already. Can we add to it in the second half? A lovely ball from Kai Havertz out to Orsolini. We've not seen much from him since that sort of opening highlight. Can he swing a ball in straight to the Liverpool defence? But uh, we've uh, read it quite well and can potentially work something here. Liverpool quite far back, so it's going to be difficult to find enough room. But Rhys James on the right-hand side is it, it's another penalty. <laughs> It is another penalty. Andy Roberts in this time. Both Liverpool's fullbacks deciding, yeah, you know what? We're just gonna just gonna hack you down. Another penalty. Haaland for his second. And this time he's been saved by Allison. He went the other way. And Allison he predicted that one. And he's made the save. So what one out of two for, for Haaland so far. Not not ideal. The pie with a free kick swinging in to Orsolini. It's it's not gone in apparently. It's not gone in. We, we've still got it. It's not. Is it another penalty? No, it was, that was a good challenge this time. Can we please see a replay of that? How did that not go in? All right, we're going through the behind goal camera angle. We're just going to watch it really slow motion. The header comes in from Bastoni. Allison doesn't get there. I th oh, it hits the bar. Oh, I don't think it, 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 I mean, it doesn't go over the line there. That oh, Okay, very unlucky. Now Liverpool looking for an equaliser. Alexander-Arnold across to Barbosa. Can we get it away? Only as far as Mohamed Salah, who smashes it into the net for... It's it's 2-2. Could have been 4-2 at this point, or 4-1. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, we've missed a penalty, and uh, we've had a ball that uh, well, very nearly crossed the line, but didn't quite do it. And uh, now our, our lead is gone, which is just fantastic. Right, are we going to go straight to penalties? I kind of... I want to leave Haaland out there. Because at least he scored one penalty today. And yes, it is a penalty shootout. Brilliant stuff. I brought Mason Mount on in the final few seconds because he's he's our other really quite good penalty taker. Um yeah, let's just let's just go for it. Uh it was quite a good performance against a very, very good Liverpool side. So yep, yeah, just keep going, guys. Well done. Right, it's been a while since we have one of these. Uh Harlan to take the first one. Obviously, he has successfully converted 50% of penalties today. And uh, you make that make that 66%. Well done. Well done. Good start. Mohamed Salah equalising goal scorer for Liverpool. Equalises here. Mason Mount. Mason Mount usually very reliable. And he's reliable once again. Gabriel Barbosa. Thorn in our side last season. Misses it. Fabulous start to the season, Gabriel. Very, very, very pleased with that one. Sandro Tonali. Big season needed from him. Steps up and scores. Good, Good start. Well done. Right, if we can if we can save this one from Curtis Jones, we're going to be in a very good position. Donnarumma, he's in action and he's just he's just jumped away, wrong direction. Still got the advantage though. Memphis Depay to make it four to us, he does. Right, and this is critical for Liverpool. If they miss this, then uh, we won. Alexander Arnold hits the post, and we have won a penalty shootout, and it's our second trophy. In as many games. Very nice. We are just a regular Mikel Arteta over here. FA Cup, Community Shield double. You love to see it. Fantastic stuff. Look at Haaland. He's about six foot taller than everyone else. Brilliant stuff. There we go. Fantastic. And, uh, uh, yep, brilliant. Yep, fantastic. Well done, guys. There, there it is. There's, there, that's what we were looking for. There's the sparks. There's the confetti. Not quite the same level as the FA Cup, but still very much appreciated. 
not a bad way to start the season. Much better than last year, where obviously we lost it in pretty convincing fashion. So yeah, I'm, I'll take that. And uh, the XG obviously inflated because we had two penalties. But there we are then. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back pretty quickly, I think, for some Premier League action. Most likely, I think, Bournemouth and Man United. We had some issues against Bournemouth last season and against Man United, to be fair. So that seems like a good place to go to. Now, obviously, this is the season with the Qatar World Cup. So no, no matches in November, not many in December, and then just loads afterwards. So I mean, we've obviously had some practice of that with the... Uh, the old coronavirus season schedule so yeah not not ideal but uh, we've got lots of options in the squad so let me know what you think of the transfers how do you think we're going to do this season leave a like subscribe all that sort of stuff and i will see you next time